How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. We've got one more video this week with Jared from Superstition Meadery and a little birdie tells me that maybe one day, one day, these guys are going to get a still and start putting some of their stuff for a still, which is pretty cool. It made me ask the question, what kind of mead would you want to distill and how would you do it? Yeah. And we don't know the answer to that. But what we do have is a whole lot of barrels. We're going to go hunting for the right mead to distill. Uh, we're going to do that, but we're also going to talk about what? <laughs> what this little nail in a barrel, what is it? Rumor has it that uh, Vinny from Russian River is kind of the originator of the, uh, the putting a nail into a barrel to pull samples out of. Right. Anyway, so carry on. What, what's, what's the deal? Give, let's give us a quick explanation. <clears throat> And then we'll, we're going to actually do one. We're going to put one in yeah. now and uh, show a few examples of pulling them out as well. Yeah, so it's just um, so that you don't get more oxygen into your product in the barrel. Um, and it's just easier to take samples and everything. Putting a nail into one of the staves of the head. And that yep. way you just pull the nail out and get a sample and put it back in. And you, you don't have to worry about bacteria or right. oxygen or anything like that. So you don't have to open the bung up. Right. You don't have to put anything into the barrel to pull anything out. Yeah. Easy. Easy peasy. What could go wrong? Yeah. So what's the general plan here, dude? What are we going to do? So, we're going to... This is isopropyl alcohol. Keep okay. it sanitized. Yep. Just do a little spray here. And in the event we need to vent the bung, we'll go ahead and put some up there as well. Okay, just in case. Just in case. Then... So we can't just bang a nail directly in there, right? No. Because we may... If that could split a stave, and then it's really tight and really hard to get out, we want it to be... No bueno. Yeah. No good. Yeah, yeah right. So, um, yeah, so we've got nails here. They're already sanitized. Okay. Um, so you want me to catch as soon as this starts? Yeah. On? So I'll, uh, not quite yet. Okay, it's going to be right about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, no. We okay. talked about this. We talked so, about this, yeah. So. Look Did right deep down the, 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 the center of that lens and tell the people so, exactly what just happened and why we think it's funny. The barrel's empty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So it's basically as the, as the staves absorb the liquid and everything, it creates a vacuum on the inside. Right. So we do actually have to uh, vent the top so that the, the pressure will release go the pressure this way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love that you're just doing this with your bare fingers, dude. Nice. The man's He-Man, he just did it with his bare fingers. Oh, they're, they're plastic. Oh. Or, Still. Or, or rubber. Or <laughs> Alright, so now that the pressure's been uh, equalized, I guess, it's flowing freely. That is so simple. Now next time we pull this nail, it'll be easy to get liquid. We right, won't have to right, do that right, again. Right. <laughs> there you then, are, sir. Oh, thank you. Just split this up. All right, so tell me what we have here, dude, and tell me what we're um, we're looking for. So this is this year's mm. batch of aphrodisia. Okay. So it's the most recent grape harvest that we fermented with the honey and then is now barrel aging. And this is Syrah? I, I think so. Should we check? Let's yeah, check. I, think, I, think it's, I think you're right. I think you're right. Dude, there's so many it things is, in this Syrah. place that I yeah. do not envy yeah. you trying to remember this stuff at all. <laughs> well, cheers, man. Oh, cheers, yeah. Yeah. This one's a little... A little drier than that aphrodisia cuvee that you liked yes. so much from before. Yeah, that was delicious, guys. Uh, if you want to see me tasting some of the finished products at the tasting room, uh, go and check out the video. There's a card floating around up here somewhere to uh, take you over there. And then you, once you've seen those, you can come on back and see what we're talking about. Um, so it's a little higher alcohol. We, we let it go a little longer this year. Finish is drier and it's more tannic. Mm -hmm. but, is, but was the other one back sweetened at all? No. It wasn't. We, okay. we, we, we just stopped fermentation a little sooner. I see. Okay. Um, but this yeah. is definitely more wine-like mm -hmm. than the other one. I think this one is 17%. Ooh! And Dude, really? Yeah. It is so clean, guys. Like, yeah, congratulations, yeah. No, guys. Thanks. This is, um... That might have been an accident. <laughs> 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 but it's great, though. It, 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 it's, like, it super clean. so and clean. Still really juicy. You get all that yeah. great character and I everything. I would not have thought it was 17%. There's no... It tastes like there's no higher alcohols in this for me. 
at all. Which is a really good point. But the legs are so, yeah. if you look at the legs, it, they're so quick to form and fall down. Yeah. Something that we actually talked about in the other video was fermenting to a high ABV, super clean. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's something interesting for distillers. So I get no higher alcohols in there. There's no alcohol heat. There's no yeah. alcohol burn. 17%! Yeah. <laughs> and so this is something Ooh. that I would want to send you with. Oh, yeah? To, okay. uh, to, to distill and see what we get. This could be interesting. So we talked about this a little bit earlier, guys. And we, we sort of talked about how the, um, the honey flavor will probably disappear quite a lot in distillation. Yes. But to be honest, the honey flavor is not overly prominent in this either. It's really like um, just to raise the, the alcohol kind of. So this yeah. is like 80% fermentables from the grape. And then we just use a little honey to to raise it from where it was. Right. I don't know. The the starting gravity of the of the grape is probably like one point one oh right. or something. Okay. And we probably yeah. used honey to raise it up to like eleven forty or something. Okay. Right. So a few extra points. Uh, but it doesn't drink like a wine. Why is it so different to wine? <sighs> that, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, it will be interesting to see if one was to distill this. Whether it would just taste like a brandy, or whether yeah. it would be something new, whether it would be something different. Yeah. Which raises the question, guys, what the Sam Hill do you call a fermented mead? A uh, distilled, distilled mead. <laughs> a fermented mead is a mead. I don't know the answer to that. Do you know the answer to that? No. No. Do you guys know the answer to that? If you do, we would love to hear. We had a quick talk about this. Our gut feel is that maybe it's a brandy. It's like a honey brandy. Yeah, a honey brandy. Because it's a honey wine, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of lame. That's not very exciting. Yeah. It sounds like it's sexier than like Honey Jack, but yeah. <laughs> but not yeah. satisfying still. No. If that's true or there is no name for it, uh, throw some ideas out there for what you would call a distilled mead. Yeah. We need to know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is really cool. Uh, very much sits on the wine side of mead. Yes. Right. Uh, is there anything else that you think might be successful running through a still. Yeah, we, we have some friends in Phoenix, Oso Brewing Company, who have done this for us in the past, um, just to see what it was like. And we put a sizer through, which is apple uh. and honey fermented together. That was very good. You, you got a lot of that apple character come out right. after the distillation and everything. Okay, interesting. So, we've almost got an empty glass. Ooh. <laughs> and we need to show the people the Vinny Nail in action Yeah. after it's been put in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm thirsty. Ooh. I got something. You got, yeah? I got right. something. <laughs> oh, but before we go, guys, I have to thank the Patreons, the Patreon roll over oh here. God. Yeah. Out of the way, dude. <laughs> have some respect for the Patreons. Honestly, all jokes aside, though, guys, I could not be doing this stuff without you. I would not be here doing this, filming this without the Patreons, so thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. With the barrels that already have a nail in them, is there yeah. anything different in the process? Different in the process? Well, that's what we've got this for here. Um, I'm just gonna hit just this large with this, hammer with some more alcohol. Just keep it sanitary. Yep. And sanitary, then, sanitary. And then uh, you would just pull this nail out like so. Fine touch. And then not as powerful of a stream as the last one. <laughs> You make that look easy, man. I guess you've done that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I basically have to take samples on most all of these at some point, so. Uh, I will say that there's another technique okay. that um, I learned from my friend at McKellar San Diego. Uh, his name is Daniel. He's the head brewer there. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he actually, what he does, he gets even longer nails. He puts it in halfway, and then he bends it. And oh. with, the, with the, the leverage action, he can just... He can grab it and just pull it out without using the hammer. Oh, right. Which That's I think pretty is cool. pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So what do we have this time, man? So this is a... This is honey, apple... Oh, okay. And Pinot Grigio. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's almost a third of each, basically. This is not a new American oak barrel for us. This was a first-use Chardonnay barrel from another local winery. Oh, okay. So even more wine yeah. crammed in there. And yeah, so this has got a lot going on. Hmm. Oh wow, it does. So my gut feeling is if you did the other one, it would be port-ish. Mm -hmm. Red grape brandy-ish. Yeah. And this would be more cherry-ish. Yeah. 
But there's there's two options too, guys. Like, do you distill it and have it as a spirit, or do you distill some and then fortify the rest with its own distillate? And I think both yeah, could be both really be fun. Really cool. yeah. <laughs> oh, I would love to have a full barrel of this as a spirit, just distill Ooh. like enough to have to have fifty gallons or whatever go into a barrel. You could age it like that. You could bottle some off like that. You could blend some of it back into yeah other stuff. Yeah, possibilities are endless. So this is a totally different experience yeah. to the last mead. It drinks like a... This one drinks more like a red wine than the last one. Oh, uh, sorry. A oh, white wine. This one drinks more like a white wine yeah. than the last one <laughs> drank like a red wine. Sure. To me. Yeah. It's so, drier, I think. Yeah. But man, that's interesting. We probably made like 80 gallons of this. Okay. Right. We filled just one barrel. Right. And so of those 80 gallons, I bet it was like 30 gallons honey. Oh, okay. And then probably like 25 gallons Pinot Grigio and 25 gallons cider. Okay, so this is heavier on the honey than the last one. Yes. That one was more yes. like 70, 30 yes. or something, yeah. Right. This is delicious, man. This is um, dangerously, dangerously crushable. Yes. What's the ABV on this? It's probably right around 15%. So not as high. But still super clean. Like, you guys are nailing the fermentation. And that's those fermentation nailing we it. talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Check them out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what do you think, man? What would you prefer? What What would you be more excited about tasting distilled? Well, oh, that's a good question. I think this one. You reckon? I think Interesting. this one, yeah. I was going to say the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going to do them both. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, and the reason I, that that's more personal preference. For me, personally, especially with whiskey, with, you know, any whiskey, scotch, bourbon, whatever, I tend to like the dark, fruit flavors so mm. plum um prunes all of those sort of things coming through which the other one had in spades i can just kind of imagine that yeah. being distilled and then aged on wood but this will be amazing too i don't know guys what, what do you reckon i know i've asked you a lot of questions of this video but i would love to hear what you have to say drop some comments down below let us know what you think these guys should focus on uh, if when when you get set up with a still yeah <laughs> and maybe 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 somewhere along the line i can uh i can do a little test run yeah, that'd be cool. Be cool. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, subscribe down below. Hit the notification button so you can see more of this content. If you really like these videos and you're finding value in them, there's a couple of things you can do to help out. Number one, share these videos with anyone else that you think might like to see them. Number two, check the merch for the shirts in the links down below or in the bar below YouTube. And number three, if you're really finding value in these videos, Make sure you jump on over to Patreon, check that out, and sign up if it works for you. All right, guys. Uh, from Jared from Superstition Meadery and me, Jesse from Still It. We'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.